We're going to have a, a couple of presentations now by entrepreneurs who are doing some things in the emerging solutions, and I think you'll enjoy hearing them. First, uh, I'll welcome Sarah Menker. She is the founder and CEO of Grow Intelligence. Sarah, we're looking forward to your presentation. Good morning, everyone. Um, I decided instead of talking directly about Grow Intelligence that I would share my thoughts on why we're still talking about food security today, and I'll do it in, in five minutes. 42 years ago, the profound comment of our era is that for the first time, we have the technical capacity to free mankind from the scourge of hunger. Therefore, today we must proclaim a bold objective, that within a decade, no child will go to bed hungry, that no family will fear for its next day's bread, and that no human being's future and well-being will be stunted by malnutrition. That, will, that was Henry Kissinger at the 1974 World Food Conference. Three and a half billion people later, end hunger, achieve food security, and improve malnutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. That's SDG2, adopted in uh, September 2015. So how did we get here? Wh why are we still having this conversation when we so clearly coined the term food security 42 years ago and started the discussions then? To me, the theory lies in, in the fact that what we haven't done is we've spent a lot of time understanding the components that make up agriculture, but haven't made the investment required in understanding the system, the system as a whole. How does each individual component behave, but what are the interactions between the components, both linear and non-linear? How is it that a coffee producer in Ethiopia can be impacted by the fact that some policy has changed in Hamburg and Germany around coffee imports and the re-export of coffee beans. How is it that corn prices in Kenya are going to be affected by a drought in the US or Russia? There are highly linear and non-linear relationships that drive these markets, and we haven't made the investment in that. And therefore, I would argue, that's why we haven't tackled the issue the way we would have anticipated to. So on predicting and planning for the future, what does this system look like? This is a highly simplified version of, of the system, but if you think about the, the layers in, in clean kind of uh, way, it's, you know, you have the environment, which we can't, um, we can't control it, but we must certainly understand it. You have the inputs, then you have farmers and you have production. And then after it's produced, you have logistics, markets, and consumers, that's us. We have to understand, not as a flow chart, how all these components behave, but how is it that I can change the life of a farmer, I as individual Sarah Menker. And obviously in all of these layers, what you do have consistently is capital and policy. So the problem has largely been that the lack of normalized, reliable, and real-time information about drivers of supply and demand has actually kept agricultural markets inefficient. There hasn't been a unified space and a common language that we use to describe this information for us to actually understand these relationships. The information does need to exist in component, on a component-by-component component basis because agriculture is inherently really complicated, but we must combine all of that together. This information asymmetry combined with environmental uncertainty actually leads to the volatility in the markets. Volatility actually translates to basically risk, right? It's a, it's a risk parameter. Therefore, this extreme volatility oftentimes driven, shocks driven by on the supply side more than on the demand side because we can study trends on demand but supply is really largely driven by weather parameters, um, means that the cost of capital is too high. So at GROW, what we've done is we've basically attempted to tackle the common language problem. And how do you create a unified space around that? So what we did is we said there's tons, billions and billions of dollars have been invested in, in actually collecting information around the world. Public institutions, NGOs, um, companies, we all sit on this data. It comes in the form of tables and images and words. 
But what we haven't done is we haven't created that classification system in common language. So at GROW, what we did is we created a common language for agricultural markets, and we developed a mechanism whereby you can run analytics on all that data combined in one go. And you can do it in minutes. In minutes, what it oftentimes can take 45 to 50 days of a geospatial analyst, a designer, an engineer, and a market analyst combined can do. So Clues Today is a global platform that's the name of our platform that we've created. It has trillions of data points, over six million data series with global coverage. Why do we have this? It's because we believe in one thing. We believe that lowering the cost of capital should play a central role in discussions around food security. Systemically contextualized information can actually be the infrastructure that drives the increased efficiency and flow of information that actually can drive down the inherent cost of capital. It's not just about loans. It's about the flow of information to ensure that every player across the agricultural e ecosystem is behaving and acting in a way that is optimized and can speak to one another. Thank you. <laughs>